my name is Deborah Mitchell. Uh, most of you don't know me, but I'm going to be interning at St. Paul's this summer. Um, and I'm a junior at Olivet Nazarene University in Illinois studying pastoral ministry. I'm going to put a little bit more info about me in the post. Um, and you can feel free to ask me any questions that you might ha have just so that you can get to know me better. Uh, and in some ways, I already feel like I'm getting to know you guys better because I've been worshiping with you for the past couple of weeks and I've really enjoyed it so far. And I'm looking forward to hopefully being able to meet all of you in person this summer. Pastor Becca asked me to share the devotional video for today. And as I was thinking about what I wanted to share with you, I couldn't help but think about the Lenten season that we just ended with Easter. I don't know if or how any of you participated in Lent this year, and I'd never really done much for Lent before this year. However, back at Olivet, I have a roommate and good friend whose tradition tends to talk more about Lent, and she helped me think more deeply about the meaning of Lent. And one of my favorite reasons for participating um, that I've discovered is that it's a time to participate in both the sufferings of Christ and the sufferings of Christians around the world. And yes, I know that Lent is over, it's been over for almost a week now, but I can't seem to stop thinking about this powerful connection that is made when the whole body of Christ, the whole church, suffers together. 2 Corinthians 1 verses 3-7 through 7 helps explain this connection, and it reads, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. For just as we share abundantly in the sufferings of Christ, so also our comfort abounds through Christ. If we are distressed, it is for your comfort and salvation. If we are comforted, it is for your comfort, which produces in you patient endurance of the same sufferings we suffer. And our hope for you is firm, because we know that just as you share in our sufferings, so also you share in our comfort. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Paul presents this interesting dichotomy between comfort and sufferings. They aren't quite as opposed as you might think. Instead, somehow shared comfort comes out of shared sufferings. And sufferings don't drive us apart, they bring us together. And I've experienced this in my own life. My mom passed away when I was nine, and while I would in no way refer to this as a good thing or a comforting thing, one good thing that has come out of it is the ability to connect with others and comfort others who have suffered something similar. And right now, we're in this really crazy time where everyone around the globe is suffering in similar ways. We're facing isolation, fear, stress, financial concerns, just to name a few. And the good news is that even though we may be locked in our own individual homes, we don't have to suffer alone. We can choose to participate in suffering with others. It does have to be a choice, though. I mean, it's so easy in times of struggle to just focus on our own sufferings and the sufferings of our close friends and family. And I completely understand that. Everything is overwhelming. So you might think, I can't share in someone else's suffering. I've got too much on my own plate. I can't take somebody else's stuff too. But the other piece of good news is that participating in sufferings brings comfort. And I don't know if any of you have heard anything like, pain shared is pain halved. Joy shared is joy doubled. I, I think that's a pretty good saying for this passage. You don't have to manufacture the comfort either or try to pretend that everything is okay. Rather, it is the comfort that we receive from God and are able to then share with others. So how can you choose to participate in the sufferings of others? There are a lot of different options, but I think that prayer has to be involved. Prayer that the comfort of Christ will abound just as the sufferings of Christ abounded. Maybe you choose to learn about the sufferings of how another country is dealing with the coronavirus for even five minutes, and then you pray for them for another five minutes. Maybe you choose to reach out to a friend or acquaintance that you haven't talked to in a little while, and then you pray for them. Maybe you choose to pray for another city or another church even. Maybe you choose to pray for something that is not coronavirus related at all, because let's be honest, sometimes we all need a break from it. Um, like you could pray for a friend who's sick. Um, the idea is to just spend like 5 to 15 minutes thinking about and praying about the sufferings of another that you don't normally think about or pray about. And as you expand your sufferings, you might just discover that your comfort abounds as well. So as we go throughout the rest of our day, may the comfort of Christ be with you today. Amen.